Good evening and thanks for joining us. Exactly what has happened to scores of foreign workers at a natural gas complex in the Sahara Desert remains confusing tonight. How many are still hostage, how many have been killed, still isn't clear three days after the bloody siege in Algeria began. U.S. officials now confirm one American has died, two others were rescued, and at least two others are still being held hostage. Algerian State TV reports 100 of the 132 foreign workers kidnapped by Islamist militants are now free. That, though, has not been confirmed. Tonight, the first hostages have been flown out to places like Norway. It's believed a Canadian resident is among the survivors who arrived there late tonight. There are also reports one of the hostage takers may be Canadian. And there are some harrowing tales emerging tonight from those who escaped. Sean Mallon begins our reporting on this tonight. The first views of jubilant gas plant workers after being freed from their captors in a remote corner of the desert, unanimously grateful to the Algerian soldiers who got them out. Everything is okay, and uh, thanks to the Algerian army. I think they did a fantastic job. I was very impressed with the Algerian army. Very exciting episode. Um, well, I feel sorry for anybody who's been hurt, but other than that, I enjoyed it. There are some amazing stories emerging from survivors, including this from Irish engineer Stephen McFall. We're all in a uh, uh, booby trap. We're all wired up to explosives, and the, the, the military are firing on over the top of us. McFall later told his relieved family in Belfast that he escaped when the car in which he was being transported crashed during the attack. There was also a Frenchman who got away after hiding under his bed for 40 hours. But this video comes from Algerian state television. Impartial information is scarce, given that foreign journalists and diplomats have been kept far away from the scene of what has been reportedly a bloody and some say botched rescue. The operation still incomplete, more than a day after it started. There is a report from a Mauritanian news agency that a Canadian is among the hostage takers. Foreign Affairs says it's looking into the story. That same agency says that the militants have offered to release some Americans if the U.S. frees Omar Abdelrahman, who was convicted of plotting to blow up landmarks in New York. Britain's Prime Minister is one of several leaders seething at Algeria's failure to consult, given the presence of so many foreign hostages. I was told by the Algerian Prime Minister while it was taking place. He said that the terrorists had tried to flee, that they judged there to be an immediate threat to the lives of the hostages and had felt obliged to respond. Algerian security forces have a reputation for ruthlessness in fighting against Islamist rebels. Algeria may have made the calculation that uh, recapturing control of this gas field was more important perhaps than uh, the risk of some hostages losing their lives. The hostage takers are allegedly led by Mukhtar Belmokhtar, a one-eyed militant who has been affiliated with a regional Al-Qaeda group and responsible for many other attacks and kidnappings in the region. Now at the center of an incident that remains dangerous, confused, and with international resonance. Sean Mallon, Global News, London. To help us put this into context, Walid Ferris joins me now. He's a professor and commentator on Middle Eastern affairs. Mr. Ferris, these reports a Canadian may be among the hostage takers is distressing. Is there evidence Westerners are being recruited into Islamist groups in Northwest Africa? Well, absolutely, there is evidence that Westerners, Americans, Canadians, British, French, Germans, have been in the past recruited in the jihadi network worldwide, should it be at home, but also in the area, in Somalia, in Bangladesh, uh, in parts of Libya. Now we have information that French jihadists on their way to Mali have been arrested by French authorities. We do have assessment uh, that the Ansar al-Din organization, Al-Qaeda affiliates, are calling on their Western membership to head to Africa to help them in the fight. And are Westerners, Canadians, particularly appealing to these jihadist groups? Do they offer something that others don't? Well, Westerners in general, Canadians in particular, have the ability because of their passport, because of the languages they speak, to get in touch with Western communities, including economic communities in this part of the world. And that is very important for the jihadists to have individuals who can penetrate the Western presence in Africa. So it might give them better access. That would definitely give them better access inside those Western military forces, but also civilian, economic and other as well. And we've heard warnings that Mali is at risk of becoming a permanent haven for terrorists. Do you believe that? And are extremist groups there organized enough, do you think, to launch attacks against the West? 
actually they have become what the French, African, Arab, moderate, and now becoming international move in Mali has uh, objective for is to dismantle that before northern Mali would become like Waziristan or Afghanistan before 9-11. Really, the battle is not just about the country of Mali. It's about interdicting the ability of the jihadists to form in a weak state that is Mali in the northern part of Mali, an international base for the jihadists. That's what the whole issue is about now. Okay, Mr. Ferris, thank you so much.